Afternoon. Um, being confident. That's one of the things I would say a lot of people are under undervaluing. Um, but also it's something a lot of people need to work on. Because if you're not confident of something, it does show. Uh, but also in a sales environment, a work environment, um, teaching environment, pretty much anywhere, being confident in something is something that reflects. You know, people can see it. If you're confident with it, they trust you. If, you, if you're confident with it, there is a sense of, I know what I'm doing, etc., etc. It's why you see in us a lot of leadership programs. It's like a projection of how to deal with people, and they fluff it up in many ways. But at the end of the day, if you're confident with it, that is one of the main things you need to have in leadership. It's one of the reasons you'll see, even on military strategies, a lot of it is not about always being right, but simply leading. Um, because standing around, thinking about it, dragging it on, um, it's not good in many scenarios, not just military, but pushing forward with an idea and just going, right, this is what we've got to do, this is what's got to get done. Even if there are consequences with it, the importance is often in driving it forward, which comes with confidence. Confident you will make it happen. Confident it will occur. Um, now, it doesn't mean that you have to be completely, um, what would you call it, uh, high risk, you know, taking high risks on things that just because uh, it'll work out, don't worry about it. It's more a case of being confident and developing your confidence. Developing your confidence also involves becoming more informed, better skilled, better educated, understanding it better. Because um, it doesn't matter what it is. This is the thing. If you're a teacher, the confidence comes with knowing what you're doing. It comes from the experience, the knowledge, the training, and understanding the needs of the people you're dealing with. In a business environment, you know what the problem is, you know what the solution is. If you don't, you find out. You make it happen. You become more confident. In a sales environment, especially in a high, um, what do you call it, high intensity sales, where you would be aggressively selling, they are very confident in a manner as well as aggressive. Now, it doesn't mean that they're trying to threaten you and strangle you to buy something, but they will be very confident in the way they approach you. And a lot of that confidence doesn't just reflect in that type of selling. But the reason I bring that up is because they understand that you've got to be confident with it, you've got to push the product, you've got to understand the product. And you've also got to understand the customer and understand rejections and understand how to turn it around and flip it around and make it happen. Now, in a normal, and I say normal sales environment, for example, the guy that's trying to sell you a fridge freezer, he's not trying to force you into it. He's not selling you a timeshare, for example. <laughs> but the sales techniques are often similar or should be you want to improve your sales technique. If you have people coming in and you're selling washing machines and they want a fridge freezer, well, it's pretty obvious you've got to know about the fridge freezers as well, um, as well as the washing machines, so that you can turn around and take them to whatever. You know, you've got to have the knowledge and understanding the products. And often I find that the sales techniques that are in store often may not be available. You know, at the end of the day, they might not give you a sales manual on a Toshiba or whatever, but you can get yourself on YouTube, you can get yourself on Google, you can inform yourself. At the end of the day, this confidence where you actually are informed and know what you're doing, when somebody says, you know, I want to buy this hi-fi, does it have Bluetooth? You know it has Bluetooth. But it, you're not just going to go, yeah, it has Bluetooth. You're going to go, not only has it got Bluetooth, but you can plug it into your PC system. It works with your mobile phone. It works with um, more than one Bluetooth item at the same time. 
it's got a radio tuner, it's got a CD deck, whatever. You, you know, you, you know that item. You're, you're not just selling the one thing where they're just going, well, it's got Bluetooth, and that's one of the things I wanted to tick in the box for something I'm interested in. You're turning around and going, okay, it's got Bluetooth, but it's got far more than that. And on top of that, you could even move on to the upselling, which is another stage. We turn around and say, that's great, but this month we have on offer this one, which also has all these extra bits that you all know inside out. And then you push that. You know, at the end of the day, it's not aggressive selling, it's informed selling. And it comes with confidence, because you're, you're not saying, well, um, let me have a look. Um, I think it's got Bluetooth, it says page six. That's not selling. That's not confidence. That is somebody who has asked you a question and you do not know. You're not coming across as the salesperson that knows their items. You're not coming across as the salesperson that is going to make good sales that month. You're coming across as somebody that started this morning. So you've got to understand confidence comes with a practice. Because one of the things on things like this, when somebody asks you Bluetooth and you didn't know, you turn around and go, I should have known that. Where's the manual? Haven't got a manual. Get your phone out. Okay. Yes, it's got Bluetooth. It's got, oh, it's got two HDMI inputs. It's got the whatever, you know. Um, the point being is you inform yourself. Even if you turn around and you're like, you've got only got like 10, 20 stereos, you can keep these little bits of information where you learn it. You know, you go, stereo one, this, 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 or this. This one's got this and this, and do comparisons. And you can turn around and upsell, because you're informed, but you can turn around and say, well, this one's only got an 80 watt speaker, but if you spend another 100 pounds, that one over there's got 400 watts and a two year guarantee. All these sort of, sort of things are about confident selling. Now, when you're in a work environment, it's exactly the same. If you're going into a job interview, most of the time, People make a decision, not on your CV, because that got you the, in the interview most of the time, um, but because of the way you sell yourself to the people in the room. When you're looking at a business that is wanting to hire you, understanding what exactly they are looking for. Uh, for example, if it's a office-based um, corporate environment, you know you should wear a tie, you should know you should wear more of a uh, plain shirt or something. Something that just says, I fit in here, you know, a corporate usual stuff, suit. But when you go into the interview, it's about confidence. You know they're looking for specific things. When they've advertised the job, they say, I'm looking for somebody that understands this, this, and this. So you focus on that. And you focus telling them that you know this stuff inside out, that you are the person that they need. Not only that, you're looking for something long term, you're looking for a company that's going to offer you some growth and development and you're also looking at a career path and progression within a business and you're actively developing that as well. Because a lot of companies want people to think for themselves. A lot of companies won't invest in training but if you turn around and say, well you know what, I know you're after XYZ and I know next year this new one's coming out. I've already got a training course starting in, in September, blah, blah, blah. They always think, this, this person's on the ball. They, they know it. They love it. They, they're living it. And that is confidence. That is telling them that you know what you want. You know what you, they need. You are the person that they need in their business. Now, some of this comes down to confidence speaking. Now, the thing with speaking is things like this, getting a video and sitting talking to yourself. And it may sound a bit crazy to say that, but doing videos, even if you're not gonna put them on YouTube or whatever, but simply sitting there, developing your confidence, getting rid of the, uh, the mm, I don't know, uh, you know, all the things that show that you have to think about it. It develops over time. So when you start doing this and you start making videos, if you go back to my original videos back in, I think, 2008, you'll see how bad they are. 
Now, I won't delete them. I don't delete my videos. But the point is, if you simply look at it, look at the difference between the time, you know, between now and then. How much has that evolved? How much has it changed? And you know, you'll get abuse in comments if you do it on YouTube anyway. So people go, oh, this stuttering idiot or whatever. You know what? It's very easy to comment negative stuff. And the fact that somebody has to comment that way says a lot about them. You know, at the end of the day, it takes a lot to get onto live video. So at the end of the day, anybody that's less than a half wit, I suppose, uh, would just actually understand the fact that you're putting yourself out there in the first place. So you have to understand that rejection is another bit of confidence. If it's something stupid, you know, then quite simply it's just like water off a duck's back, just brush it off, move it away, doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you're going to get those people in life. That's just normal. But when you start getting some people that are confident with it and seeing what you're doing and appreciate it, engage with you. I mean, a lot of people engage with me privately and I don't really discuss too many people on the YouTube channel at all. Um, but there's so many different types of people that I engage with for different things. You know, some people it's to do with a bit of mentoring. Some of it is to do with business, some of it is to do with relationships, all sorts. But the whole point is, is being confident in whatever you're doing anyway. You know, if you've got problems in a relationship, for example, you need to identify the problems. And part of the confidence in this is actually sitting there and understanding that there is a problem and how we're going to fix it, if you want to fix it. And all that is confidence. All of it. You know, at the end of the day, you have to take the responsibility. You've got to take the bull by the horns. You have to turn around and lead yourself. I get companies tell me I'm going to do X, Y, Z, and I turn around and say, no, I'm not, because it's not contractually obliged. You know, and you get people sitting there like not used to people telling them no, because they assume that you're so owned by them that they could do this. But my confidence is, quite simply, stick it. Um, because there's plenty of other companies out there I can work with. I'm not, I don't need bad companies. And I don't need companies and people that assume they can hold you for ransom. And I know some people get stuck in those rut jobs. And one of the things I will say, if you do that, you're better off building your own confidence and realizing you're worth a lot more and finding something else. And that's the thing, you are worth a lot more than you often think or realize. Um, because quite simply, you need to develop your confidence. A lot of people will pull you down. Very rarely do people go, great job, one, you did a fantastic job with that, blah, blah, blah. Here's a bonus, you know, whatever. That doesn't really happen. You, all you hear about is people complaining. You know, at the end of the day, I'm sure people that turn up at the complaints department don't expect people to call up and say how great they're doing. Um, I think in that sort of environment, no telephone's ringing is a sign that you're having a good day. But the point being is, whatever you're doing, be confident at it. Enjoy it. If you're not enjoying it, change it. Develop it. Do something else. You need to develop your own skills. You need to get where you want to be in life. You only have one life. You're living it. Enjoy it. Thanks for watching.